All that talk about bombs and explosions. Now let's talk about the bomb, the nuclear one. It's been used just twice in history, during the Second World War against Imperial Japan. The cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed by the United States. More than 200,000 people died instantly, 200,000. Why am I talking about this today? Because the man who made this bomb is now a celebrity. He's got his own movie, Oppenheimer. It's running in theatres across the world, but one country is strangely absent from that list, and that country is Japan. The movie still has not released in Japan. In fact, no date has been set for the release. Now, Japan does have a history of delayed releases. They don't screen every Hollywood movie. First, they see what the response is like. If it's good, then distributors jump on. But this time, there is something more at play. The story of Oppenheimer is the story of America's nuclear program. It's all about the man, his scientific struggles, his moral dilemmas, and his subsequent persecution. Do you know what's missing? His victims. Oppenheimer's invention killed 200,000 people. Their story finds no mention in the movie. Now, I get that the film is about Oppenheimer, not about Japan. The director gets to decide the story, what goes in, what doesn't. But surely, the death of 200,000 people is not something you can ignore. What do people in Japan make of this? Well, they're split over what needs to be done. One section thinks the movie will be traumatic. Others feel it's a new perspective. Listen to this. In the end, there are still victims of the atomic bombing and bereaved families around. So I think it's possible for the film not to be shown out of consideration for those people's feelings. I think that among others, there will be plenty of people who won't want to see it. I think there are a lot of people, like the bereaved families, who would be critical and wouldn't agree with showing it. I think people are still interested in the film, maybe interested in the American perspective of all of this. I think maybe it might be even better to show it here and then kind of educate Japanese people even more about it. Oppenheimer's story is a bit complicated. People say he was opposed to using the nuclear bomb, that he did not support the attack on Japan. It's a bit rich, I would say. The Manhattan Project was led by the US military. Why did Oppenheimer think they wanted the bomb? For some nice fireworks? Or to shove it in some, in some showcase? Maybe he did feel remorse and guilt for what he did, but that does not make him innocent. Just ask the people of Japan for them. Oppenheimer is not the story of a scientific breakthrough. It is the story of death and destruction. Maybe that's why the movie has not been released yet. Also, the timing is problematic. Hiroshima was bombed on the 6th of August. Nagasaki on the 9th of August. That's next week. So releasing Oppenheimer now would be a tone-deaf move. But this story goes beyond just one movie. It's also about storytelling. You see, it's OK to trigger conversations. Movies and art should. But it's not OK to trigger trauma. Let me tell you about an another movie. This one is a Bollywood film. It's called Bawal. The movie compares a marriage to Nazi Germany. If you think that is problematic, you should hear some of the dialogues. They will make you flinch. Dialogues like, every relationship goes through its Auschwitz. Or there is a Hitler inside all of us. Now let's be clear here. This is not creative liberty. This is downright triggering and insulting. Auschwitz was the, was the largest concentration camp in Nazi Germany. 1.5 million people died there. You can't compare it to a struggling marriage. Even the Israeli embassy in India has criticized it. They said that the movie has trivialized the Holocaust. The dialogues have compa com and comparisons, rather, have been called disturbing. It's hard to argue with that. You see, both these stories are worth telling, the Holocaust and the atomic bombings. Very important events in history. But it's also important to tell it in the right manner. The atom bomb was not just a white scientist's obsession. It was also the cause of misery in Japan. You can't separate the two things. Same with the Bollywood film. The Holocaust is not just something you read in books. It is a painful and traumatic memory for millions of Jews. And you have to respect that. You must understand the sentiment behind the story. If not, these mistakes will keep happening. And over a period of time, it becomes a new reality. How many people in the US question their government after, for, for bombing Japan? 
when Oppenheimer tested his bomb. Nazi Germany had already surrendered. Japan would have done the same. So why kill 200,000 people? Not a single U.S. president has apologized for what happened. Even Joe Biden was asked before his trip to Japan this year. He said no. Movies like Oppenheimer have successfully peddled the American propaganda. They glorify bomb makers and generals. But their victims are largely forgotten. If they are remembered, it is only as collateral damage.